Hi girls, today we're going to talk about being kind and taking care of those in need. with Women Rock, and we are so excited that you're joining us today. This is a show just for girls, and we are learning about what God says that women are. Now, you know, the world around us, it's like screaming all these horrible things about the definition of woman and who she is and how she should be, and we see bad examples everywhere. But did you know that God actually wrote all about who he created us to be? That he knew us in our mother's wombs, that he knitted us together, and that he actually put the things about us inside of us, and sometimes those things lie dormant. And I love that God kind of gives us a visual of this in Proverbs 31. And so we've been tapping into Proverbs 31. Now, you, Proverbs 31 can be a bit overwhelming, and sometimes you can read it and go, I just don't feel like I'm this girl. This is such an old school girl. That's such an old school way of thinking. But I'm here to say, no, it's not. It's actually beautiful what these scriptures pull out, and it's lost art is what I like to think about it, because it's the beauty of who we are. No one else can be woman but us. And God is so intricately knows this, but yet God loves us so much, he talked about us at the very end of Proverbs, the chapter of wisdom. So he knows what he's talking about. So let's step into it. Proverbs 31:20 is the verse we're on this week, and I love this one, because I'm a pastor at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center in San Bernardino, and we are a city that is rough, around the edges. And, but you know what? There's so many homeless, there's so many broken, but God has blessed our church to love and be his hands and his feet in our community. And so Proverbs 31 20 talks about this girl. Let's read it really quick. It says, she extends her hand to the poor. Yes. And she reaches out her hand to the needy. Sometimes we feel like, Ooh, I don't want to be that woman. I don't, I don't want to like give outside of myself, but listen, Get off of that, and today we're going to step into how can I step into the woman God needs me to be and love those that are in need. You see, the Proverbs 31 woman is kind, and she takes care of the needs of those around her. Now, sometimes this is the poor on the streets, and sometimes this is your family in your own home, but God has called us to take care of the needy. He has called us to be kind and to do well and to um, be excellent at all that we put our hand to. God cares about the poor so much that he actually promises us good things if we take care of the poor. Let's read about it. Go with me to Psalms 41, 1 through 3. It says, Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in a time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on earth. You will not deliver, he will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Verse 3, the Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sickbed. Hold on a second. So God is saying that if we take care of the poor, that he's going to keep our enemies at bay, that he's going to take care of us on our deathbed, that he's going to bless us here on earth. I don't know about you, but I need to get on it. I need to be more like Christ every day. I need to be his hands and his feet, giving beyond myself, giving beyond yourself. You see, giving beyond us doesn't normally come natural. Some people are those people because they've come out of something very rough in their lives and all they want to do is give back to the places that they once were rescued from. But maybe you're not that person and it doesn't come natural for you. That's okay, because it might have to become a new mindset for yourself. You might have to literally discipline yourself to start thinking of the needs of others, to start thinking about what can I do for someone today? How can I bless someone today? How can I go out of my way? How can I be an encouragement to someone in their life today? And then maybe you're thinking things in your head, but you don't say them out loud. I know there were many times my husband and I, when we first got married, he would think, oh, you look beautiful today, but he didn't think of saying it because he never really heard heard it much when he was growing up between his family members. And so I had to tell him, hey, do you, do you like what I'm wearing? And, and I could tell he was like, oh, yeah. And now he, after 20 years of marriage, he has taught himself 
you look good today, Jess. I love you, and you look beautiful. And when he says that to me, that encouragement fills my heart, and I can do anything that day. I can conquer the world. And you know, some of you are so tainted that you think, oh, well, I don't need encouragement from a man. I'm here to tell you, you need encouragement from anyone because we're human, and we only go as far as we are encouraged. And so being kind to someone is actually getting outside of ourself and giving into someone else's life so that they can go and be all that God has called them to be. You see, Christians, we shouldn't be tearing each other down. We should be building each other up. We should be making the world around us stronger and better and more beautiful, not becoming the problem in the world. And so listen, church, We've got to come together in this. We've got to do this better. We've got to give of ourselves. And maybe that has to be done consciously. You need to actually like think about that and go, okay, how can we as a family maybe do something for someone this week that we wouldn't normally do? Get your kids involved in it. Get your family involved in it. Every year at Christmas time, we always think about like, okay, what gifts can we give to people and who's in need and who is who has helped. There's been so many times that we've driven by somebody as we're getting off the freeway and we go and buy them food and come back and bring it to them. And I have my kids be a part of that because they need to know that those people on the side of the freeway, it doesn't matter what they're gonna do with the money or the food. What matters is that we loved them and that we brought a place of dignity and humanity back into their life because people drive past them and tell them how horrible they are every single day. But what if you drove past them and said, hey, God loves you. And you just let the love of God shine through you so that they know that God sees them and that he cares for them. You see, this is going beyond yourself. This is loving people to a bigger and a better place. This is, this is be beyond us and actually very godly of us. In Romans 12, 1, it says this, and it says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Has God not blessed you? Has God not always been faithful? Tell me one time God was not faithful for, to you. No, you can't because he's always faithful to the righteous. He's always faithful to those that are obedient to his word. He's always faithful to the one that seeks his face and loves him. And so God being faithful to you, you are then a sacrifice to him for the betterment of someone else. And it says, let them be a living and a holy sacrifice. That means your life is holy and it's sacrificial for the kingdom of God. This kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way of worship to him. In our family growing up, my parents were the most generous people in the whole world. I mean, I remember one time they had just bought us the movie Bambi. Do you guys remember that movie? And me and my little brother were so excited about it. And this missionary came through and we always had missionaries staying with us. And this missionary came through and he was in our home and he had lots of kids and he was going back across the world back to his home in Africa. And I remember looking for the movie Bambi after he had left and I'm like, have you guys seen Bambi? I didn't see Bambi. I don't know where it went. And my mom's like, oh, we gave it to him for his children because they didn't have it. And I remember crying and crying as a, as a little girl, thinking, why did you give away the movie that I've been wanting for so long? And my mom began to teach me, because nothing we have is ours. Because everything we have, we need to be ready at any moment to let someone else have it because we can't allow material things to be our possession, to be our prize. But everything that we have is for God and used for God. In that moment, something clicked in my heart and I was so happy that his kids were able to enjoy the movie that I loved. In fact, now I think back and think that was the saddest movie ever, but I hope that they were blessed by it. And you see, nothing that you own, nothing that you possess here on earth will be any good unless you use it for the kingdom. Don't allow possessions to have you. You have them so that you can bless other people. Be an extension of Christ into someone else's life. See, we love people and we go out of our way. What missions organization can you maybe be a part of? You know, so many times my husband and I, we have been a part of um, the children's, you know, places like in Africa or whatever, and we adopt children. And we have seen many, many children grow up and become doctors and lawyers in their own countries. And we paid for it every month and we connected with them through letters. We've sent missionaries on the mission field. We're always a part of something bigger than ourselves. Why? Because none of it is mine, all of it is God's. And if he put it in my hand, it's not for me to keep and hold on to it tightly, but it's for me to love someone and be a blessing to them and to give. Luke 16, 19 through 25 says, Jesus said, there is a, to a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and in fine linen, who lived each day in luxury. Do you know anyone like that? 
Verse 20 says, And at, the ga- at his gate laid a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. Verse 21, As Lazarus laid there, longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and he would lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham in the heavenly banquet. And this rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Abraham in a far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. Verse 25, but Abraham said to him, son, remember that during your lifetime, you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted and you are in anguish. Yikes. I don't want to be like that rich man. I want to be like Jesus who came for the broken and the poor and the needy. Next time you can be something more than just normal, do it. Go out and love someone beyond yourself. Go and find a way to be a blessing in someone's life. Go find a way to say kind words and and make yourself think about it. I'm going to go tell tell them they look pretty today. I'm going to go tell them, hey, they did a good job on that project at work. Or, hey, I'm going to go tell them that they did a really great job organizing that event. You see, you just never know what someone's feeling, but maybe it's the words of encouragement that you will bring to the table, that you will bring into this atmosphere that will bless them. Proverbs 31.20 says, She extends her hands to the poor, yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. Don't hold back. Be a giver. Be a blessing to someone in their lives today. For those of you that do not know Jesus Christ and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior today, I want to give you this opportunity. I don't want you to leave this show and wonder, how do I make Jesus my God? You can't just think that he's wonderful or just believe. You have to ask him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. You have to surrender all of who you are to him and allow him to come and restore you and fill you and teach you how to live the way that he has called you to live here on earth. How do you do that? Well, you're going to pray a prayer, and I'm going to pray this prayer, and you're going to repeat it after me. It's very simple. And when you're done, um, I'll give you some information on what to do next. But it's such a simple thing. So if you miss a word or you forget a word, don't worry about it. It's about the attitude of our hearts. We're coming before God, God Almighty, and he loves you and he's calling you home today. If you've never asked him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, I'm talking to you today. This is for you. Maybe you've run from God and you've kind of backslidden and you've done more of your own thing instead of God's thing. I'm talking to you today. Let's get right because you're not promised tomorrow. Maybe you've been wondering about accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Today, just do it. Let's do it. And come into the kingdom of God and be welcomed into his kingdom as his child. So here we go. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you today, a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, fill me and teach me how to live for you on this earth. Thank you for today. Thank you for this moment that my sins are washed away and I am new. I leave hell behind today and I'm headed for heaven. I'm running after you, God. Lead me and teach me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, congratulations. You are now part of the family. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Now, you don't want to do this alone. What do you do next? Go to www.rockchurch.com and click the Get to Know God button, and somebody will be there to help you walk through it. We'll send you some material. Number two, you need to find a local church. If you're in our area here in San Bernardino, California, come check us out, come hang with us. We'd love to get to know you. We have a beautiful home. But if you are in another part of the world or the country, then go ahead and find a local church, a good Bible-believing, Christ-centered church that will teach you his word and you can find new family and new friends and don't do life alone. We love you guys. Until next time, I'll see you then. Love you girls.